and we'll see how to activate an eSIM on our iPhone and also how to set it up after we've installed it. First of all, when we start our iPhone, if it's just booting up for the first time, the most important thing is to have a Wi-Fi network activated, whatever it may be. We need to have a Wi-Fi network on, or if someone can turn on their data and let us connect to their network, that works too. Once we have the network connected, let's go step by step. For this occasion, we're going to go directly to our settings, up in the right corner. I have mine in English, but just pay attention to the icons. Here, we're going to go into the section that says Cellular, which has this network icon. We just click there. I already have my eSIM set up, but I'll show you how you would set yours up. Once you're inside your phone, to add it, just look for the option that says Add eSIM. We just click on Add, and if we have another iPhone nearby, this message will pop up for me, SIM card not supported. That's because I just switched from another iPhone to this one, and that iPhone has a physical SIM card, not an eSIM, so it doesn't work for me. But if we click on other options, that's where we really have the options that might work for us. Now we have two options. The first one is to transfer from a nearby iPhone. So if there's another iPhone, say we changed phones, before selling it or giving it to someone, we can transfer all the data, including the eSIM, without needing to scan it again or anything like that. We just transfer it to the new iPhone and click transfer from a nearby iPhone. So, we just need to have it close by, connect it, or place it on top or underneath, and it would automatically start the process. If we don't have this option available because we don't have another iPhone, because we've already given it away, sold it, or simply don't have it, then we have the second option which is to use a QR code. The QR code is something that the phone company we contracted with has to provide us. So, we click on use QR code, and here a camera will automatically be enabled. In this case, I have it covered, but I'll show you. That's the camera, as you can see. What would happen is that we could scan the code, and that's it. We just scan it, and it automatically configures. But if we don't have the QR code, we might need to do it as it says below, which is to enter details manually. It asks us for this information. Here we have the perfect example, and this is literally how the phone company could send us the QR. They send us this QR, and we just scan it, and we could have our eSIM directly. But if it doesn't work, or we don't have it, we would need this information that appears right below, which is this, SMDP plus, address. Here we would have the configuration or the link, in this case, the activation code. Don't try this here because this is just information. What was uploaded here to this page is just to have a reference. So when we have that data, we would have the option here. As you remember, we would have this data for the SMDP address, then the activation code, and this confirmation code is really not necessary. It's completely optional. Now, if you've done this and you're still getting an error and it keeps bothering you and won't let you connect, then at that point, you would need to go directly to your phone company or call them and ask what's going on because it wouldn't really be an iPhone problem. It would be more about the carrier you have. Now, when it shows up as configured or linked, you'll see this over here. Well, this might show up for cellular data for personal use. And this might not because it shows up for me since I've been using the SIM for a while so I have some usage or consumption of my mobile data. But if you're just starting out, you'll see this up here. Now, let's go through this one by one. This cellular data is basically the option we have to enable our mobile data. And why? Does it appear that we can deactivate it or activate other lines? Because one of the advantages of ESIMs is that we could have multiple ESIMs at the same time. One just for calls, another just for data, and so on. This way, you can have different lines set up for your business, personal use, family, etc. 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 Now, before we continue, remember that yes, IMs are only enabled for iPhone XS, XS Max, XR, or a later version that supports the option to have eSIM. You could have an iPhone, for example, the 14, but if it has a physical SIM, then you have to use a physical SIM card. If you have a SIM, then the eSIM wouldn't work for you. Now, after we've chosen what function we have here, for example, I have two activated, one is personal and the other is primary. 
In this case, the one I use for everything is the personal one, so we would have the option to have that here. Now, the personal hotspot is basically to enable our connection points so that other people can connect to our Wi-Fi or mobile data. In this case, we won't do that. Then, for the default voice line, we obviously have to select which line we want to use. In my case, it's also personal. This would basically be for receiving calls. That's the one we would use as default. It doesn't mean that we won't receive calls on the other line. It just means that, for example, when I make a call, it will automatically go out from the line I've selected here. And if, for example, I connect to mobile data, it doesn't mean that if both SIM cards have mobile data or both ESIMs have mobile data, I can't use one or the other. It means I can switch and choose which one I want to use depending on the moment I'm in. Maybe I'm in a city that has better data from one carrier than another, and I can be swapping them to test them out. Then here in the ESIMs, we would see all the ESIMs we have available for use. So in my case, we have the primary one, which is currently set to isn't. Then here in the ESIMs, we would see all the ESIMs we have available for use. So in my case, we have the primary one, which is currently set to isn't, disabled because I don't have any SIM assigned there. Next, we have the personal option. I already selected it this way, meaning I chose for this to be personal because we can also choose different names. For example, a custom name if that's what we want to call it, like dad's SIM card, for instance, and I just leave it like that. Or if not, you can choose any of the options above, like business SIM card, mobile data eSIM, my personal number eSIM, primary eSIM, secondary eSIM, or the SIM I use for travel, as you can see there. So I can assign different names. The name doesn't really change anything in terms of how the SIM is used. It's just to help me stay organized. Then, once we have the SIM set up, all of this will show up. If we want to enable the SIM, we need to have this option turned on, which is the second one down here, to be able to use the SIM for calls, data, etc. etc. Then network selection, it is advisable to leave this on automatic in case options appear. Leave it on automatic because the idea is to connect to the best network or company available. We have my number, but it doesn't show. Your phone number appears, but my carrier, Tygo, doesn't support this. General phone settings like enabling Wi-Fi calls for stability. Call from the same number on multiple iPhones with the same iCloud account. Choose the network, like 5G, which isn't fully available in my city. If 5G is an issue, switch to 4G LT. Data mode manages usage to avoid running out quickly. These are the eSIM settings, how to link it, and how it works. I hope this video was helpful. Questions? Leave them in the comments. See you. Bye. Next, we have the option for calls on other devices, which means if we have our iCloud account on other iPhones, we can even call from the same phone number. It's actually pretty great if we have multiple devices. Next, we go to data, which is basically choosing the network we want to use. In my case, I set it to 5G. It's not available throughout my city, but at least I have it there. If it bothers you a lot when connecting to 5G, you can force your phone to connect to 4G, which in this case shows up as LT. This is really helpful if you're having issues with any G network or something like that. Then we have data mode, which is like using the maximum amount of available data or measuring it so we don't run out of all the GBs we have too quickly. After that, there are more general settings, but well, friends, this is where this video ends. These are all the eSIM settings, how to link it, how it works, and several other things. That said, I hope this video has been helpful, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. See you, bye bye.